My dear brothers and sisters, in the name of Christ, we bid you welcome to this sacred time in this sacred place, which we share with you sacramentally as we celebrate today the Sunday within the octave of the Feast of Corpus Christi, the day in which we give thanksgiving for the institution of the Mass, the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread, the Holy Communion, the Eucharist. We come to this place with our concerns, our prayers, our many questions about how can there be so much violence in our world. We bring them to Almighty God and we entrust ourselves to his care and his grace. We quieten our minds and our hearts, we still our thoughts as we prepare to worship the true and the living God. by him in whose honour thou shalt be burnt. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. On this feast of Corpus Christi, in which we give thanks to Almighty God, the sacrifice of this Holy Mass is offered to the praise and glory of Almighty God for a deeper devotion to the presence of Christ in the midst of our world, in the most holy sacrament, the altar, and in the word of God proclaimed in the lives of God's people. We pray for the peace of the world, and we pray also for the ministry of the church, universal, for John, Diane, 
and Samuel, our bishops, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to themselves. Examine yourselves, therefore, and call to mind your sins and your failings. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life. To the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgiveth all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Jesus Christ, 
we thank thee that in our wonderful sacrament thou hast given unto us a memorial of thy passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood that we may ever know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of thy redemption who livest and reignest with the father and the holy ghost ever one god world without end amen a reading from the first book of Moses, commonly called Genesis. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What reward shall I give unto the Lord for all the benefits he hath done unto me? I will receive the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows now in the presence of all his people, for I to deed in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Behold, O Lord, how that I am thy servant. I am thy servant, and the son of thine handmaid, thou hast broken my bonds in sunder. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the sight of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, even in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Praise the A reading from the first epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, brothers and sisters, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
the continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eat of this bread, they shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in them. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so whoso that eateth me, even they shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your ancestors did eat manna and are dead. But whoso that eateth of this bread shall live forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I don't know if you can hear, but we have helicopters circling almost directly overhead. There are two reasons for that, and this isn't part of the sermon. The two reasons are, well, firstly, the police helicopter uses St. Thomas as a marking point. They circle around from Grauman's Chinese Theatre all the way up the boulevard to St. Thomas and then back again. They turn just above us. But also today there is a protest march starting over at Highland, I believe, and they'll be heading westwards, we think, along Santa Monica, but they may be coming along uh, Sunset, which is considerably closer, or indeed Hollywood, which is just through the wall. One of the most difficult problems I realized for us at this time, during this time of social distancing and sometimes self-imposed isolation, it reminds me of that saying that Warren Buffett has. Warren Buffett says, it's only when the tide goes out that you can see who has been swimming naked. Only when the tide goes out can you see who's been swimming naked. In this current series of crises, one might hope to see some deep truths laid bare. But what are they? What are we learning in our current 
situation, our economy, our so-called culture, society. But what fundamental weaknesses do we see being exposed? I think probably first and foremost, I would say I've noticed the, the disparity, the vast disparity between those who have a voice and those who are voiceless, between those who are provided for, who have enough resources, and those who are without. And it's very interesting that actually some of the most angst-ridden people seem to be those who have the greatest sense of entitlement, are comfortable middle-class lives have been slightly disrupted. There are cases, of course, of terrible, terrible sadness, bereavement, grief, and indeed tragedy in our own parish. Anthony Ray and Gary Warning and Jennifer Collins just recently have lost loved ones who are very close to them. John Thornbury has been in hospital and was unable to have any visitors. These are times when our emotions are really quite, quite stretched. One of the things that I've realized, and one can see this in quite a number of journals and newspapers, and in people who actually have taken a step back to try and see a, a bigger picture, one of the key elements is our obsession with efficiency, with work, with getting it done. We have made so many plans. There have been so many arrangements. There are so many bookings that have been put in place. And now, of course, everything is on hold. It's quite difficult for us to accept that we have to stay at home or we have to cease going to the office or the factory or the school, and more and more things are being done online. It's the hyperactivity of the online culture that I slightly worry about. If this pandemic of the coronavirus has exposed anything else. The fundamental flaw, I think, in our economic system is our extreme mobility. That the virus could spread so very, very quickly in such a short space of time around the globe, which is why social distancing has become such a key, crucial figure. Yesterday, we participated in the ordination of six new deacons in our diocese. It was a magnificent occasion. And I, I think about my own priesthood, but also about the ministry of all God's people. 
what is it that we are able to offer <clears throat> in a busy, frenetic, efficiency-obsessed world? Stillness. Peace. Mindfulness. Being able to stop. Being able to simply wait on the presence of God. Timothy Radcliffe, the great Dominican theologian, former Minister General of the Dominican Orders. In his latest book, says, we fear stopping. We fear the ordinariness that life outside the fast lane will mean. We fear our own company. One of the reasons we need to check our emails so often or our text messages so regularly or watch television so frequently is because the prospect of living with ourselves is just too frightening. But the consequences of living in such a fast-paced world are now becoming apparent all over the place, both inside and outside religious communities. People are waking up to the fact that such a way of living is not only unsustainable, but it is destructive. That is part of what the church is able to offer. Not entertainment, not a convenient way to spend our leisure time on a Sunday, but to give order, to give definition, direction, and meaning in our lives. As each of us have spent more time away from each other than we've possibly ever done before. We are engaged at a different level. And in some ways, it's very interesting. I am not going to so many meetings physically. And yet, like some of my friends, I am participating in online meetings with the diocese and the bishops and various other groups. And it's more tiring, it's more exhausting because it needs a lot more concentration of a kind that we haven't been used to. The hyperactivity, the hyperconnectivity that appeals to us is actually sometimes quite detrimental. It is good to take a step back. And this is a profoundly countercultural element. So I'd like to end with some words from Bishop Stephen Cottrell, who has just been confirmed as the new Archbishop of York and the Primate of England, currently the Bishop of Chelmsford. The church is a community, not an organization or an institution, and I would argue it is not a denomination or a club either. It is a community of men and women and children formed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his impact in the world 
and it is constantly being transformed by the activity and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We are here, each of us, to respond to the call of God. Therefore, all ordination, like the ordinations yesterday, all baptisms in which we are called to follow Christ, God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of God's kingdom. As we sacramentally partake in the body and blood of Christ, though not physically at this time, may we become more truly the body of Christ in our broken world. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, with the Church through all ages and in all places, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We pray for the Church Universal, for this diocese, for John, Diane, and Samuel, our bishops, for Michael, our presiding bishop. We pray for Guy, Lutheran bishop in this city, as he prepares to move. We pray for Jose, Roman Catholic archbishop in this city, for the leaders of the free churches, for Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Patriarch of the East, and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. 
as we have heard of the violence and shootings in Atlanta and Palmdale and Victorville. We pray for peace and justice in our world. We give thanks to Almighty God for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country. And we pray that we may use them responsibly and with due consideration for the safety of others. We pray for those who keep the peace and safety of our many streets, communities, and we pray for peace in our homes and in our hearts. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for individuals who need our intercessions this day and among them. We continue to pray for Carolyn Ullman. We pray for Steve Bruce, husband of our suffragan bishop. For Reese Thompson, Bajat and Sue. For Michael Cridland and his mother who lives in San Marino. We pray for Doris Martin on her 82nd birthday. For Nancy Thornbury Nipper. For John Thornbury, Lyra Vickers, Jimmy Hughes. For Hollis Welliver, Dana and Lynn Fleming. For Anne and Daryl Gray and their sons, Clint and David, for Mason Rose. We pray for Gary Warning in mourning, for Ray Anthony in mourning, and for Jennifer Collins in mourning. We pray for Diocese of Chelmsford at this time, and especially the Archdeaconry of Southend. As we hear of the horrific murder of the Archdeacon's daughters, we pray for that family. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died among the recently departed. Richard Wayne Penniman, Jerry Stiller, Fred Willard, Ken Osmond, Ravi Zacharias, Nancy Fryer Mays, George Floyd, a victim of racism and murder, Anthony James, Richard Hurd, Mary Pat Gleason, Remington Lee Pittman, Paul Gambrell, Terry Maleka, Eleanor Linus. We also give thanks this day for the ministry and work of Bishop James Montgomery, late of Chicago, and for Father Edgar Wells. We pray for the repose of their souls and for those whose years mindful near this time, recorded in our parish's chantry book. Gerard Manley Hopkins, priest and poet, Richard Seaver, benefactor, Charles Richardson, William Doyle, Marsha June Hord Mosby, Kenneth Rockstra. We remember the victims of the terrorist attack in Orlando. Also Ruth Carmen Pickford, Richard Crocker, Christopher Snell, Stuart Wayne Gavitt. David Colston, Professor of Literature. Sister Marsha Francis, Gary Bruce Burkett, Dominga Cisneros, 
Craig Williams, Paul Naginis, Stella Maud Dixon, Jose Lopez, Louis Wolf, Henry Chadwick Priest, theologian and historian, Peggy Ullman, Peter Roncone, Pedro Ladalino Rodriguez, Patricia and Buna, Richard Neal. And I invite you <clears throat> in some silence if you wish to place any names in the comment box. We can pray for them. Or Michael Reinsch. Even though technology escapes me, Almighty God knows our prayers and petitions. Thank goodness. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. So, concluding our prayers, our petitions and our desires, merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would invite you now to stand if you're at home and you've been lolling or lounging around on your sofa, settee or couch, whatever you uh, describe it as, to stand, stretch your legs and your arms, get the blood flowing slightly. And um, we are the body of Christ in one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now I share with you a sign of peace at home and also with the poor, very patient and long-suffering uh, cameraman. Couple of announcements. The live streaming masses will continue this week on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings. And on Saturday evening, there will be the usual Latin Vigil Mass. And then two weeks from this weekend, so not next Saturday, but the Saturday after, we will have Evensong and Benediction, uh, devotions before the Blessed Sacrament. And because today we're keeping Corpus Christi at the end of the Mass, I will be placing the sacrament in the monstrance and leaving it, leaving him on the altar. And uh, I will then start live streaming on my Facebook page. I think that's how we do it. Um, so that you are able, if you wish, to uh, spend time in adoration of the blessed sacrament. Um, we remember today the confraternity of the blessed sacrament and we pray for all who are involved in the ministry of the sacrament of the altar for our acolytes altar guild and all who are involved in liturgy ascribe unto the lord the honor due unto his name bring offerings and come into his courts with praise <laughs>
crystal down. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the good of all, his children. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. <clears throat> It is very meet, right, and our bounder and your hooty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. And now we give thee thanks, because when his hour had come, in his great love, he gave this supper to his disciples, that we might proclaim his death and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the holy company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. holy, indeed the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of thine Holy Spirit and according to thine holy will these gifts of bread and wine may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
My Lord and my God. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. my Lord and my God. Therefore, let us proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ hath died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking to his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer unto thee this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before thee this bread and this cup, and we thank thee for counting us worthy to stand in thy presence, and serve thee. Send thine Holy Ghost on John, Diane, and Samuel, our bishops. Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and on all thy people, and gather into one in thy kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of our Blessed Lady Mary, ever-Virgin Queen of the Angels of the Little Portion, Our Lady of Walsingham, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Saint Thomas, the Apostle, our Patron and Protector, Saints Damien and Marianne of Molokai, Saint Thomas Aquinas, and all thy saints, may praise and glorify thee forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the holy ghost all honor and glory be unto thee o father almighty world without end amen And now, as our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. This is the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive thee. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. The holy gifts of God, for the holy people of God. There is only one who is holy. There is only one who is Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
As we render thanks to Almighty God for this most holy sacrament of the altar that sustains the life of the church, we pray that this sacrament may bring unity to the church and peace to our broken world. Thou gavest them bread from heaven, containing within itself all sweetness. Let us pray. All praise be to thee, our God and Father, for that thou hast fed us with the bread of heaven and hast quenched our thirst from the true vine. Grant that we, being grafted into Christ, may grow together in unity and be partakers of his heavenly feast through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, who hath nourished us with himself the living bread, make you one in praise and love and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And we join together in the anthem for this season of the church's year, the Angelus, which commemorates the incarnation that our Lord Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, dwelt among us. The angel of the Lord brought tidings unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.